in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed these truths are pillars they are the pillars of the miraculous hallelujah that every time you desire to see the miraculous work in your life and in ministry you will have to subscribe to these foundational truths the first of that pillar is called the grace of God there is something about the grace of God you must understand if you want to see the manifest power of God. Remember we're talking about the manifestation of his kingdom. You must understand the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9 it says for by grace are ye saved and then it says that through faith by grace just the A part so our salvation of all sorts comes by grace and then through faith. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 is where I find my definition of grace. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I began to touch that yesterday, that my definition of grace is not just limited to unmerited access. The grace of God, broadly speaking, refers to every dimension of possibility that resides in God, represented in the Christ, available to the saints in and only through the office of the Christ. It's called grace. So the grace of God is not limited to just a dimension. His power is His grace. His wisdom is His grace. Anointing is grace. Faith is grace. Every possibility that makes God, God, are we together now? Available to the saints only through the office of the Christ is called the grace of God. This is very, very important. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14, Apostle Paul was teaching and he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. He says, let it be with you. His desire was that the grace of God will ever be manifest in the life of the saints. The Bible also says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Be strong in it. Derive your strength from that revelation. The Bible says some trust in horses for their strength, some chariots for their strength, but now he says derive your own strength from the grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, apologies, I'm rushing so we can do much before the time for the ministration. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. He says, but the God of all grace, uh -huh. now you watch carefully, the God of all grace, not the God of grace, all grace. That scripture immediately suggests to you that grace is dimensional. He says all grace. That means there are dimensions to the grace of God. Please understand this. These are foundational pillars that control the manifestation of the grace and the power of God. Please keep that scripture. He says, but the God of all grace all of the dimensions of grace that can be captured in the life of the believer. Last year at Wafbeck, I shared about that mystery. Remember Apostle Paul teaching the church in Corinth. He says, and God is able to make all grace abound. Not some, all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency 
that on the strength of that grace you will abound unto all good works. So we know from scripture that grace is dimensional. This I believe is where um, there may have been an imbalance in our understanding of the grace of God. To believe that the grace of God is generic, applicable to all at all times is not a very accurate revelation. It looks very spiritual, but it is not very accurate. There are dimensions of the grace of God, and not all those dimensions are available to everyone under any condition. Please understand this. Let me show you what I mean from Scripture. Titus chapter 2. Please give it to us. We're students of Scripture. Titus chapter 2 from verse 11. Titus chapter 2. Read with me if you're a Christian. One to read. Keep that scripture there. This is the dimension of grace that appears to all men. The grace that brings salvation. But there are other dimensions of grace that do not appear unto all men. It will come by their pursuit and their alignment. It is the grace of God that brings salvation that has appeared unto all men. But there are other dimensions of grace that are a product of your obedience, your alignment, and your pursuit. This is the reason why we are not all equally anointed, although we are in Christ. This is the reason why our possibilities differ. If, if grace were generic and work for everybody at the same time, there would be no difference. There would be no disparity in the manifestation of the power of God in our lives. Are we together now? So the grace of God is not generic. There is a dimension of grace that was given by the mercy of God to all saints. It is the grace that appears to all men, the one that brings salvation. Are we together now? Yes. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. I wrote here a definition, two definitions of grace that may interest us and then we'll touch on the second aspect and we'll pray. The first definition of grace that I wrote down here is that it is a state of awareness, a consciousness. The grace of God is a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in God and only access through Christ. The first dimension of grace is a consciousness. A consciousness. Please understand this. The consciousness of the limitless possibilities that are in God. You want to walk in the miraculous, you must be aware that God is unlimited. The awareness of the vastness of the power, the grace, the possibilities that are in God is called grace. It is first a consciousness, a disposition of understanding. That tells you your mind is involved in the manifestation of the power of God, not just your spirit. A disposition of understanding. Number two, what is the grace of God? It is also an empowerment resulting from that knowledge resulting from that consciousness that energizes the believer to walk and live in keeping with the conditions that make those spiritual realities manifest. I apologize. Get the teachings. Are we together? An empowerment resulting from that consciousness. So the grace of God first is a consciousness of the limitless possibilities that are in God available to the saints through the office of the Christ. Then that the grace of God is also the empowerment that is derived from that consciousness. That there is an understanding you have and then there is an empowerment that comes from that understanding that navigates your life to walk in keeping with the conditions that make the power of God manifest. It's called the grace of God. This is very powerful. Write this down, please. The highest revelation of the grace of God, the highest revelation of the grace of God 
is captured in a mystery called the finished work of Christ. The highest manifestation of the grace of God is captured in this mystery that we have come to know in the body of Christ as the finished work of Christ. What does that mean? The spiritual blessings made available to the saints on account of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The spiritual blessings made available to the saints on account of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Alongside the advantage it has provided for the believer to walk in victory. So when we talk of the finished work of Christ, we refer to the spiritual blessings that have been made available to the saints alongside the advantage that they now provide for us to be able to walk experientially in victory. Are we together? The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God. Write it down, please. The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God, access to the possibilities of God. There is no way to have access to the possibilities of God outside of the grace of God. We have confidence tonight that the sick will be healed. We have confidence tonight that lives will be transformed. We have confidence tonight. Why? Because those possibilities are true in God. And the office of the Christ has made it available to the saints through this mystery we call grace. It is based on that revelation you can come ready to receive. Knowing that God is not wondering if he has the power to change your life. If you do not believe this, it will be difficult for you to receive. Doubt and fear comes when you do not have the consciousness of the vast possibilities that are in Christ. Are we together? Yes. If a very wealthy man calls you and says, for instance, I want to pay your rent, the awareness of how much he has gives you confidence to not ask him an irrational question. Are we together now? You are aware. If I tell you I'll buy you a house, you may look at me and say, oh, it's possible that he has the money for a house. If I say I'll buy you a private jet, you say, hallelujah, it's well. Because somewhere in your mind, you have subconsciously assessed me and felt that, ah, does he have the grace to go that far? So when God says, I will lift you and you doubt, your doubt is speaking a language. God, are you that mighty? Are you that great? The grace of God is not just an empowerment. It is first a consciousness. And then the empowerment that is derived from that consciousness. Write this down, please. Is God helping us? The grace of God provides access to the provisions of God but does not automatically make them manifest on earth. Now, this is where my teaching really starts. That the responsibility of the grace of God is not manifestation, is access. Please understand this. The limit of the grace of God is providing access. It will take another agency to sponsor manifestation. If all that you know is just the grace of God, you may never experience manifestation you will have access you will have dreams and visions of spiritual possibilities that have happened in your life but they may never be made manifest here and now and your desire is not just access your desire is manifestation because it is only when spiritual realities are made manifest that the Christ is glorified are we together now let your light so shine before men the Bible says that they may see your good deeds and then glorify your father in heaven the Bible says the word became flesh that word that resided in the realm of the spirit became flesh it was manifest we beheld the glory of God even as of the begotten full of grace and truth now this is where many believers get stuck as far as the equation that governs the manifestation of 
the possibilities of the kingdom are concerned. They are conscious of the grace of God. I know God can do it. I know God will do it. What is there? Lord, I know you are able to raise someone from a wheelchair. I know you are able to bless. You are right, but you are wrong. Because even though that is true, that is an incomplete spiritual understanding. Just resting in the fact that God can do it will not make him do it. The grace of God provides access. Everybody shout access. One more time, shout access. Access refers to potential, that this is now yours. But it is up to you to know how to receive it and to make it manifest. The grace of God. Every time I have the opportunity to minister, if the Lord tells me now that there's someone who is sick, what gives me the audacity to be able to speak? I am aware there is a consciousness that the one who is talking to me has the power to make what he has said come to pass. Hallelujah. The grace of God. Number two. Let me just share the second pillar very quickly. Let me call it the faith that works, Bible faith. Let's discuss a bit on the subject of faith. There's been all kinds of teachings about faith and how it works. And respectfully speaking, this is a believer's convention, so I'm at liberty to challenge us. Our lives and the lack of results in our lives clearly show that there may be something about the understanding of faith that is not really there because if it is the faith of God it truly works are we together now the Bible tells us very clearly from Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 that the just shall live by his faith Romans 1 17 says the same thing Galatians 3 11 Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. All of these scriptures tell us that those who have been justified in this kingdom, that our modus operandi, our, our, the way that we live and function in this kingdom is by faith. So faith is not for preachers. Faith is, even, is not for those in need. It is a, a spiritual mystery and a principle for our living. The Bible also tells us that like the word of God, Romans 10 and verse 19, it says, so then faith comes. Faith cometh. Romans chapter 10. Am I right? 17, I meant to say, forgive me. It says, so then faith cometh. Everybody say faith cometh. That means faith is like a messenger. It can come to you. Faith has mobility. It can leave a location and come to your life. Faith, like the word comes, that faith comes when you hear and when you hear and understand even by the word of God. Faith is living. Faith is active. Let me define faith. This is my definition of faith and this is consistent with scripture. I define faith as the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. The name of that action is faith. The name of the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. Faith is not just your believing your believing is part of the equation of faith but that in itself is not faith you have to understand this faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his person the integrity of his word look up please there are two attributes of god that are responsible for imparting faith in the believer. Not every attribute of God imparts faith. There are two attributes of God according to scripture that are responsible for imparting faith. Number one, his integrity. Please write it down. 
the first attribute of God that is responsible for imparting faith, Bible faith in the believer is the awareness of his integrity. Please say his integrity. Numbers chapter 23, please, and verse 19. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Read with me, please, if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, read. God is not a man that he should lie. Uh-huh. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath said, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? This is a scripture that is a manifesto of the integrity of God. He's saying, hey, God is not a man. Men can lie. Are we together now? But he said, God is not a man. It is not within his, his, he is not limited by that weakness. He is God. He is not a man. God is not a man that he should lie. So you have this at the back of your mind. That the one who is speaking to you is one who does not lie. Genesis 21. Verse 1 and 2. Genesis 21. The Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. This is integrity. He said it and he did it. He visited Sarah. Please keep the scripture there. As he had said, and he did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God had spoken to him. Someone shout integrity. Comes from the word integer. The quality of being the same. The quality of being consistent. The quality of being unbendable. You can trust God because of this quality of integrity. God is a God of integrity. When he speaks, he is worth believing. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. The apostle was teaching and he said, For without faith it is impossible to please him. That everyone who comes to God must come believing that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you come here tonight believing that God exists. You are not hoping, does he really exist? Can he really come in for me? The Bible says you must come believing that he exists and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are we blessed? You will never have Bible faith when you are not conscious of God's integrity. The Bible is a compendium of his integrity. He said many things to people and he did it. He said many things to people and he did it. He said impossible things and he still did it. God is a God of integrity. This becomes the foundation so everything he said he would do, you know that he has the integrity enough to do it. Everybody say integrity. Number two, the second attribute of God that is responsible for producing Bible faith in a believer is his ability. It's one thing to have integrity but you may not have ability. There are many sincere people who have integrity, but they do not have the ability, the financial wherewithal, the intellectual wherewithal, even the physical might. Our God is not only a God with integrity, he also has ability. Someone say ability. Second Chronicles chapter 20, please. From verse 6. We're reading down to 9, but the verse of emphasis is verse 6. Second Chronicles. Read with me, please. Ready? Read. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? Thou rulest not the kingdoms of the heathen, and in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Cancer is part of none. COVID-19 is part of none. All kinds of limitations come under this group. 
that, Lord, are you not so powerful such that none is able to withstand you? Next verse. We are reading to verse 9. Art not thou God who didst drive the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name. The last verse. If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, and then thou wilt hear and help because of your might. His ability. God is not only a God of integrity. He is a God of ability. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. I trust that this is building your faith. Because truly your life must change in the name of Jesus Christ. Read with me. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth not just with your intelligence. It took more than intellect to create. You made it with your great power and stretched out arm and there is nothing that is too hard for you. Over my life, over my family, someone prophesied, Lord, there is nothing that is too hard. Even tonight and all through this conference, there is nothing. There is nothing. Someone prophesy in one minute. Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth. It doesn't take you too long to make my life. If you made the heavens and the earth, you can make my life. You can make my family. Hallelujah. Apostle Peter began to give us this revelation in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, we'll read from verse 2 to 4. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, please read with me. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these, these manifestations we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. His divine power. Everybody say his divine power. So the giver in this kingdom is his power. Hmm. His divine power hath given us. The giver of healing, his divine power. The giver of lifting, his divine power. The giver of new levels, his divine power. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him the Bible says, Kali Barusia Kata. Look at what you are reading. Now unto him, he would have stopped there, but he says that is able. We are talking ability here. He is able to do. He is able to do. He is not just able to say. There are people who can say but they do not have the power to do. It says, now, unto him, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask. And he moves to the realm of our desire, to the realm of our imagination. And he says, still dare me. Let your mind as fast as it is, dare me. He says he can do above all that we ask and all that we think according to the power that worketh in us. He is able to do. My God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to be. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. If oh, 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 he's able. Oh, 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 o
is the God of heaven. Listen, I'm imparting faith in you. We're about to pray. His integrity, his ability. These are the attributes of God that impart Bible faith. So when I come, I come believing. Lord, I come believing that you are a God of integrity, but then you are also a God that is all-powerful. The contest in Egypt was a display of ability. The gods of Egypt, they would bring something and God would come and counter it. The last of it was the mystery of blood. And he took the firstborn and Pharaoh said, who is this? Who is this? He said, who is like unto thee? O God, above the gods, there is none. For you to conclude, there must have been a context. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? One more time, sing it with understanding. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? There's a name above every other name. You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able. You are able. Listen to what you are saying. Great and mighty God. You are able. Jesus. Did you not read in this Bible that men slept overnight as prisoners and by the next day they were princes? The ability of God. Did you not read in this Bible that men who were appointed unto death, the exploits are archived in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It said, for by it elders obtain a good report. Through faith, it says, we understand that the cosmos, the world, were framed by the word of God. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. I believe him. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, oh. You're not a man. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus, no one like you. Sit down for a minute. Please help those under the anointing. I tell you, there is faith in this place. The God that we serve is a God of integrity. If He says He will heal you, I assure you He will. If He says I will lift you, I assure you he will. Hear me, O oh man of God. If he says this is the year when your ministry will find visibility from any location on earth, dare to believe him. Dare to believe him. If he says this is the year that your business will rise, 
Don't be like the heathen. Be like Abraham, our father of faith. The Bible says he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. Listen, please sit down. Let me just tie a few things. I have walked with God a bit. By the grace of God, I can tell you when God speaks, he means what he's saying. Five minutes to the manifestation of the word, it will still not look like it. I have seen God do things in my life. I've seen God do things in our ministry. I have seen God do things in the lives of people. I look forward to when we get to heaven and we'll have a privilege to talk with him. I want to ask him a question and I'll say, Your Majesty, who are you? Who exactly are you? For the more I know you, truly the more I want to know you, Jesus. For me, it's not a special number. There is a way that God moves through your life. When Julius Berger builds, they sign their signature. So you are not confused who built it. There are things that when God does in our lives, he leaves his signature. He does it in a way that no man can confuse it. Help that lady. I'm seeing oil being poured on that lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, you are stepping into a new dimension in the spirit. This is what I see. The God who has integrity. If God did not have integrity to be risky to be a preacher, what gives you the audacity to stand and claim people can be transformed and claim their burdens can be lifted? You would dare them to bring the sick. You would dare them to bring their burdens. Who do you think you are? The God of integrity. The God of ability. It is fearful to see the God of wonders at work. Can I tell you this? Truly we have seen miracles. Truly we have seen signs and wonders. But I pray that this generation will see God in his full strength. Has, listen, has God done something to you that you did not even have the courage to celebrate it? You are afraid of your own miracle. You go back and, and watch like a spectator. I'm not motivating you. This is the dimension God is bringing you into. Did the Bible not say when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion? When the Lord, he said we were like them that dream. He didn't say we were like them who were happy. That God can do something that you don't even have the time to rejoice yet. Our mouths were filled with laughter. The testimony even reached the hidden. And that the hidden too had to commend. That the Lord had done great things for us. He said, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then he says, turn again our captivity, like the streams of the south or the Negev. Tonight and all through this conference, I came to challenge you. Mark chapter 11 from verse 22. Mark 11, 22, goodness. Jesus answering them said, Wafbek, Lagos, covenant nation, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. It's an instruction. Have faith in God. Seeing then that the just lives by faith. Have faith in God. 23. 
For verily I say unto you, that means I place my integrity on what I'm about to say. Whatsoever, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt. Where does doubt come from? An inaccurate understanding of his ability and his integrity. He says, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He said he shall have whatsoever he saith. 24, here is the formula. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Take note, it starts with a desire. When ye pray, your faith equation is not complete until prayer is somewhere in between. It says, believe that you receive it and then you shall have it. You will never have what you have not received. Darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you That's the God we serve My God is greater My God is stronger Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, my God. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.